The ongoing chip shortage is making headlines worldwide. Not only are GPU prices sky high, cars are not being built and the economy is impacted as a whole. But how can we make sure this shortage just won't last forever? Currently there are two major focus points. Number one is building more fabs all around the world. It makes a lot of sense. We need more production capacity to counter the ever increasing demand. In the future everything is made out of silicon. Number two is improving process nodes. Every year chips get more complex, they use more transistors and they get bigger. We need production nodes that offer a higher transistor density to counter that. TSMC, Intel and all the other players are already hard at work. But there's a third point and that's in my opinion often overlooked and equally as important to the future of semiconductors. I'm talking about modular chip design. Let me explain to you why. First a quick crash course in semiconductor yield. Yield is quickly explained. Modern chips are manufactured using silicon wafers and the chips are basically burned into them using a high powered light source. The goal is to have as many working chips per wafer as possible, but since no manufacturing process is perfect, there will always be faults. If one of those manufacturing faults happen to be on the die base of a single chip, that chip won't work properly. The more chips without fault, the higher the yield. Aside from using a more mature manufacturing node with a lower error rate, there are two main ways that companies use to mitigate potential faults. Number one is pretty easily explained. Just design smaller chips. The smaller the die size, the more chips will fit on a single wafer. And even with some production faults, most of them will come out just fine. It's a numbers game. Another way to mitigate faults is plan for it. You can disable parts of a chip that has some faults into it and use it as a lower tier product. For example, a fully working Navi 21 chip is used in a Radeon RX 6900 XT and a chip with some faults has some units activated and is used and sold as a Radeon RX 6800 XT or a RX 6800. Still, modern chips use more transistors every year and while evolving production nodes can counter that with higher transistor densities, there's another area that's really important if we want to keep the die sizes of the chips smaller. A modular approach to chip design. Instead of producing one large die, you can just split it up. We've seen this approach with AMD Zen 2 in the mainstream area for the first time. Instead of producing one large die with 16 cores and I.O. on the same die space, AMD split it up. They produced smaller 8-core CPU chiplets and they also took the I.O. area and outsourced it into a single chip too. Not only does it allow them to produce smaller chips with a smaller die size so more of them can fit on a single wafer, it also means they don't need to produce and design different chips because they can use the same ones for different products. They just use it in the 64 core Epic as well as in a 6 core Ryzen. It's the same base chiplet. With the upcoming 3D recache and Zen 3D, we will see the next step in this approach. Produce cache independently from the CPU cores and then stack them on top at the end. If you design your architecture around this concept from the get-go, you can even further reduce the die size of the independent chips. If you want to know more about stacked cache and Zen 3D, check out my video. Intel's upcoming Alder Lake CPUs will still be based on a monolithic design. But if you look at the server, Intel's Sapphire Rapid will already use something that Intel calls tiles, which is the same concept. They will use different smaller dies and just put them together. And in the future, Intel will rapidly expand on that concept. But it doesn't stop with CPUs. AMD's next-gen Navi 31 GPU is also rumored to use a modular chip approach when it comes to manufacturing. When I think about chip design five years from now, I envision a mix and match kind of system where you have different parts and you just use those that you need for a specific product. For example, a chiplet just for high performance cores that is optimized with large fast CPU cores and high speed clocks. Depending on the product, those can be clustered together. On top of that, a independent cache die that's using a production node that's optimized just for cash alone, then an extra die with high efficiency, low performance cores. Those cores do not need to be produced in the latest and greatest production nodes. 
they can be using another production node that may be optimized for power consumption. Of course, the I.O. is outsourced in a specific I.O. die, like we've seen AMD doing it with Zen 2 and Zen 3. And if you need an integrated graphics card, you can just stack a GPU chiplet on top of that. A modular approach keeps the die size of the individual chips relatively small, independently from how large the final product will be. It also means you only have to design the base parts and then can use them to create a lot of different products. If you're smart, you can also mix and match between GPUs and CPUs alike. There's still a big caveat when it comes to a future modular approach to chiplet design and that's the communication between the different chiplets. These communication paths needs to be high bandwidth, low latency, and power efficient. The whole idea will fail if the data connection already uses hundreds of watts and there's not enough power budget left to actually run the CPU or GPU horse. Dr. Ian Cutters on his YouTube channel, Tech Tech Potato, just released a really interesting video about AMD's approach. I highly recommend you to check it out. I've posted a link in the description below. But no matter if Infinity Fabric, Mesh, TSVs, EMIP or Forers, I am convinced that a modular approach to chip design is the future. New packaging methods are getting center stage attention and I'm already really excited to see how Apple will incorporate these concepts into their designs in the future. Currently Apple's A&M chips are monolithic but I would bet my left foot that over the next couple of years Apple will also try to use a modular approach and reap all the benefits that come with it. The semiconductor industry just can't keep putting all their eggs into the same basket and just bet on every improving manufacturing processes. They need to make use of every tool they have available to ensure that the future of chip design can keep up with the ever increasing demand. Yes, we need more fabs and yes, we need better nodes, but a very important pillar to the future of semiconductors is modular chip design. What do you think? Is modularity the future or are you maybe a fan of larger monolithic dies like IBM's recently announced Talum processor, a 530 millimeter squared monster with 256 megabytes of L2 cache on die. I'm sure a stack cache approach would help IBM seal quite a lot. Leave a comment if you agree or disagree with my ideas. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and see you next time.